Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call this uh, October 18th regular meeting of the Zion City Council to order. Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Holmes? Here. Commissioner McDowell? Here. Commissioner Frierson? Here. Commissioner Fisher? Here. Mayor McKinney? Here. Item number three, Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Bremner, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Please? Leading us in prayer this evening is Pastor Corwin Wong from First Baptist Church in Winthrop Harbor. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Did you pray for some warm weather for us, too? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. California is still 80 degrees where I'm from. So. <laughs> I'd like to read a short passage from the Gospel of Mark to lead us in prayer. Mark chapter 12, verse 13. And they sent to him some of the Pharisees and some of the Herodians to trap him in his talk. And they came and said to him, Teacher, we know that you are true and do not care about anyone's opinion, for you are not swayed by appearances, but truly teach the way of God. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Should we pay them or should we not? But knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, Why put me to the test? Bring me a denarius and let me look at it. And they brought one, and he said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? And they said to him, Caesar's. And Jesus said to them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And they marveled at Jesus. What a great place. God, we thank you for your ordaining of the governments, that you are in control of all things. We pray for the citizens of Zion. Pray for the leadership of Zion. That we are to render to Caesar what is Caesar's. As, uh, as Christians, as citizens of God, we are to render to Caesar what is Caesar's. Help us to do that as Christian citizens uh, for all those who profess Jesus Christ here in Zion. Um, and for everyone else, Lord. Help, us, help everyone to be law-abiding citizens that work towards peace and not division. Help the governing authorities to rule well, knowing that you have ordained them to be in the positions they are in, that they have a great weight uh, of accountability upon their shoulders, knowing that they have been placed in their positions by you and you only. And Lord, help all those who profess Christ to live accordingly, to be the best citizens uh, as possible that they are called to be. And Lord, we thank you for your provisions for the city of Zion and all its residents. And we pray for the well-being of each and every soul in Zion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you Pastor Long. I, I'd also like, uh, just for us to take a moment of silence, to offer prayers to the people throughout the United States that are going through tragedies dealing with the hurricane in, in Florida, the <coughs> needless shooting in Raleigh, North Carolina, any of the other people that are, are struggling in our, our great country, if we could just have a moment of silence and a prayer for them. Thank you. <coughs> Item number four, uh, agenda changes. Are there any agenda changes by any of the commissioners? If not, is there a motion to accept the agenda as presented? So moved. Motion by Frierson. Second. Second by Holmes. Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Holmes? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner Frierson? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Mayor McKinney? Aye. Motion carries. Item number five, we have a special presentation for our Super Battalion Chief, Eric Troy. <laughs> Our Commissioner Richard Frierson, our esteemed Commissioner Richard Frierson, is going to give the recognition. Thank you, Honorable Sir. Yes, uh, I do have some comments here uh, about Battalion Chief Eric Troy. Uh, he's recently completed 25 years of dedicated service to the City of Zion um, as of October 13th of this year. 
Uh, he's currently the second longest tenured member of our Zion Fire and Rescue Department. Eric was hired October 13th of 1997 and has worked tirelessly for the department ever since. He was promoted to lieutenant in January of 2009 and very quickly escalated to battalion chief in February of 2009. He continues to capably lead his shift of firefighter paramedics and Chief Street appreciates his continued leadership as well as I and the experiences that he provides to the department. Congratulations to BC Troy. It is a pleasure to have you working for the city. All right, uh, item number six, and again, uh, congratulations, 25 years, uh, Battalion Chief Troy. Uh, today I had the privilege to go to the retirement party of a good friend of mine that I helped recruit at Northwestern to play football, and he spent 30 years with the same company, and they gave him a really nice uh, retirement party. There are some great things said about him, and... I can say in my time in working with you, uh, you've been the consummate professional. You've been incredibly helpful, and I know that uh, not only the council, but the people that you've impacted in our community really appreciate the work and the tireless work uh, and the selfless work that you do day in and day out. And we never take it for granted. So thank you. Uh, in spite of this, you know that we always tell you how much we appreciate what you do and how you go about doing it. So thank you for representing our city so well. That. And if I could go back in time and do it all over again, I wouldn't do it any differently. It's been, it's really has been a great 25 years to this point. We're not done yet. <laughs> That's <laughs> good. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. Five more years prior. <laughs> Love that. All right. Oh, no, you can beat that record. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Item number six is citizen comments. Uh, Mr. Brebner. Honorable Kennedy, Chairman Lady, Honorable Service. First, I too want to thank the Telegraph Commander Troy. He ran the Citizens uh, Fire Academy 15 years ago here, which I attended. Uh, but my main purpose for standing in front of you this evening, as I did about 45 months ago, is to remind you that on the 10th of November in 1775, the Continental Congress authorized Captain Samuel Nicholas to raise two battalions of seagoing soldiers to be known as Continental Marines. Ever since that date, every United States Marine has claimed the 10th of November as his or her birthday. This year is the 247th birthday of the Marine Corps. I respectfully request and call upon the City Council to send the appropriate birthday greetings and felicitations to the Commandant of the Marine Corps, 8th and I, uh, Headquarters, Marine Corps, 8th and I, Washington, D.C. 
I thank you for your time, your courtesy, and your attention to this matter. I request permission to stand down, sir. Permission granted, sir. Thank you, Mr. Bremer. <coughs> Item number seven, consent agenda. Approval of minutes of a regular meeting held on October 4th, 2022 at 7 p.m. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Motion by McDowell. Second. Second by Holmes. Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Holmes? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner Frierson? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Mayor McKinney? Aye. Motion carries. Bills, vouchers 141658 through 141734, drawn on Huntington National Bank. Total, $427,188.49. Is there a motion to approve the bill? I'll move to approve the bills. Motion by Fisher. Second. Second by McDowell. Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Holmes? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner Frierson? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Mayor McKinney? Aye, motion carries. Item number eight, discussion, authorization, approval, 8A, consider request to fill the deputy chief of police position per Chief Barton. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and Commissioners, again, thank you. Uh, tonight, I respectfully request to fill a vacancy, supervisory police rank due to a vacancy of the deputy chief of police position created at the retirement of Chief Stephen Dumian in 2019. I'm requesting that Lieutenant Chris Sweeting be appointed to the rank of Deputy Chief of Police per Section 50-2.5 of the Zion or City of Zion Municipal Code. I have previously reviewed this request with City Administrator David Nabel. Administrator Nabel approves this request. Is there a motion to approve? I'll make that a motion. Motion by Frierson. Second. Second by Holmes. Questions, comments? I would just say one thing, Chief, I know that Lieutenant Sweeting has been uh, fulfilling that role as kind of Deputy Chief, uh, Deputy Chief in his current role as Lieutenant, and I know this vacant position has been vacant for almost three years now, and we had planned to fill that vacancy at one point, I think when you took over, but it didn't happen, so congratulations to after the vote. <laughs> Deputy Chief Sweetie. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Holmes? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner Frierson? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Mayor McKinney? Aye. Motion carries. Congratulations. Thank you. Item 8B, consider filling the vacant lieutenant position and requesting the name of the next qualified candidate from the Board of Fire and Police Commission promotional list per Chief Barton. Again, thank you, Honorable Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, I now request to fill the vacancy supervisory police rank due to retirement of Lieutenant Anthony Velarde. This retirement has created, a, his retirement created a vacancy and requesting that the vacant lieutenant position be filled with the next available qualified candidate from the board, uh, or from the current board of the Fire and Police Commission promotional list. I can add on there that we will not be filling the position just vacated by Lieutenant Sweeting. So that'll remain, we'll just remain with two lieutenants now. All right. Thank you for the clarification. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Motion by Frierson. Second. Second by McDowell. Questions, comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Holmes? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner Frierson? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Mayor McKinney? Aye. Motion carries. Item 8C, consider approval of general budget for fiscal year May 1, 2022 through April 30th, 2023 per Administrator Nabel. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. I'm going to spare everyone who's going through 12 pages of budget line by line here. But, um, we got plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll schedule an intermission at 11 and continue on. Um, so you, you have in your package a line-by-line -line detail analysis and kind of the reasons for any you know significant increases or decreases for the year. Um, I do have a – I provided you a revised budget just now that was 
four lines that I wanted to, that had some minor changes that I caught prior to approval, but thanks to Mr. Fryer said earlier today on some of them, but um, so I'll, I'll hit those as we go through, but um, overall, uh, we, for reasons I'm about to say, we have a better uh, position this year than we've had in a long time. Um, unfortunately, I don't think that's going to be a long-term thing. A lot of this is kind of one-time dollars, effects that we're seeing of kind of money pumped in to the economy through, uh, you know, our, re our replacement taxes are up real high, or quite a bit, and the state is saying that that's going to continue going on because they pumped excess LGDF funding and relief funding into sharing with municipalities. So that's up about a million dollars in revenue from what we had in prior years. Um, our income tax is actually up quite a bit, about $1.1 million in a proposed budget for, uh, for this year compared to prior years as well. Um, and then we have some good amounts of just other taxes, value taxes, like sales tax are going up. That's kind of tied to inflationary rates. If you're paying, you know, if we're getting a 1% sales tax on the price of goods, where the price of goods go up, we get additional sales tax as a result of it. Uh, additionally, the Viola host fees or GFL advanced <laughs> waste management, whatever you want, you want to call it, um, those volumes are starting to come back now that they're, the expansion is going on. Uh, they're able to, uh, the tonnage that was diverted to other, other places while they were constructing cells and planning for the expansion is now returning here. Um, so that's about $680,000 uh, that I'm budgeting in excess. Uh, overall, our revenues are budgeting about $4.2 million uh, higher than the prior year. Um, again, another big chunk of that is the, the ARPA funding. We got a uh, part of the ARPA uh, Act that was passed for uh, under the pandemic relief. We got an allocated $3.1 million, $1.5 million last year, $1.5 million this year. So that's one-time dollars that's, that's in here that um, won't be recurring. For a couple of the corrections that I have, if you turn to page two, um, about a third of the way down the page, the reimbursement of city expenses line, we have a school resource officer reimbursement on the original uh, budget I provided you. That amount was $52,500. Um, I only accounted for one SRO. Uh, that's the reimbursement that we get from District 6. So it was six months of reimbursement because that just went into place but I only accounted for one SRO, not both, so that number was changed to 105,000 from 52,500, so a slight increase there. Also under grants, public safety use, um, about midway down the page, from the draft I presented you to now, we got word that um, we would be, we were awarded uh, a COPS grant, which is, is that the Department of Justice? Yes. So, basically authorizing us the hiring of five officers that 100% of salary and benefits are covered for the first three years, and then the fourth year is on us. Um, but we're only going to be looking at about three months of that during this fiscal year by the time we get them into the academy and stuff. But there's an increase here of the reimbursement of that. But you'll see when we get down to the expenses on the police, we have an increase in salaries and benefits for the hiring of those and for the replacement of the school resource officers that the District 6 are hiring. So there's a corresponding increase for this like $220,000 that we're gonna see. It's a net zero for the city, but they're, they're reflected in the revenues and the expenses accordingly. But that line item for the COPS grant is not in the original um, budget that I presented to you. Big picture on the expense side, uh, we're looking at about a $1.8 million uh, increase from prior year, um, just a little under 10%. Um, a big chunk of that citywide is we had a 13% increase in our health insurance renewal that was adopted back in uh, April. That's That was about a quarter million dollars of, of insurance premiums just by itself. Um, we also had about $400,000 of the minimum contribution for pension I think 350000 between police and fire. Um, and the actuary comes along and says, here's the amount you have to put into the pension funds every year at a minimum. That keeps going up because the costs keep going up. The market doesn't quite seem to be catching up. Um, 
but that is reflected in our expenses as well. And then additionally, within the police department, in the past we've been severely understaffed uh, and we budgeted understaffed because we knew that's who we had at the time. Uh, we've been able to finally get recruiting back online, um, get the hiring of those handled, um, and get, we are now very close to fully staffed, even without the, the additional cost grant. But there's an impact of the budget uh, for the, the addition of those positions. Um, also, we did a contract revision partway during the year last year for uh, step increases, um, again, to try and stop the bleeding on losing officers to other uh, other departments to remain competitive within the market in a ever increasing difficulty increasing recruiting. Um, but this also reflects the full year of that those step changes, the adjustment to that step schedule. So we have um, the increases there. Uh, we also have an increased budget in police overtime, partially because of some major incidents that have happened, but that was amplified during the time from May to now that we were understaffed on top of that, so we kind of got double whammy. But um, overall, we are in a better position than we've been in the past. Um, I say that before I drop the final piece of this budget, a $3.5 million transfer to the Capital Projects Fund. So in the past, when we had budget deficits, we unfortunately basically didn't take care of our facilities, didn't you know, that's, that's where costs were cut. Um, the departments patched together what they could, what they needed to continue operating, but that over many years has resulted in very rundown facilities um, to a point where we're looking at millions of dollars, I mean, I think it was like four or five million dollars just in the police department for HVAC, plumbing, uh, ADA compliance, um, you know, station or fire station two is got its share of problems to say the least. So we're starting to look and say, we're either gonna have to do significant repairs or start planning and budgeting and setting aside for new facilities, depending on how we wanna move going forward. We've started having facilities discussions with some of the commissioners and department heads, um, but bottom line, whatever we can transfer to capital is not enough. So we're trying to just transfer everything we can over there to start planning for catching up on these uh, these liabilities. We've just been staying afloat with operations. We haven't addressed a lot of our infrastructure, our underfunded pensions, or our facilities costs. So we're starting to, to, to plan for setting those aside. So that's why we have a significant um, transfer of those funds compared to prior year on that last line of the budget. Uh, overall, we're budgeting a $261,000 uh, surplus for the year. Uh, the fund balance is finally back in the black um, after many years of being in a deficit. Again, largely due to the ARPA funding uh, coming in. Um, but I would recommend approval of the budget as presented pending any questions from council. All right. Do we have a uh, motion to approve the budget? I'll move to approve the budget as presented. Motion by Fisher. Second. Second by McDowell. Uh, questions? Comments? One question on the gas generating fee. Did we up that to 75 instead of 50? We did, but it's not the the 75 kicks in on a certain amount of time after they're basically up and running, right. creating the new stack that generates the fee. So we're under the 50,000 for the old agreement. 75 will be in next year's uh, budget. Any other additional questions? I would just comment that. Uh, thank you, David. Uh, and thank all the department heads um, <coughs> for, I mean, this is years of, of hard work, and we've caught some lucky breaks. And uh, so we're going to take advantage of them while we can. Uh, but we have to keep in mind that this is a a leg up, but it's not, we're not completely out of the woods yet. We still have a lot of work to do ahead, and uh, so, but uh, it is good news, and so, well appreciated. One other thing, you talk about years of work on this, one other thing I'd like to point out was this is the first budget, first general fund budget that is showing debt-free. All bonds are paid off, 
all outstanding debt. We have not taken on more. Every time we refinance in the past, we refinance for the existing term rather than extend. So we could pay off those debts, pay off those bonds. Um, just, that's why you, there was one other line item on here that I didn't address saying we had no debt service transfer for the first time in probably 15 years. Yeah. It's good work. Thanks. Terrific, terrific work. Stop and keep yeah. that proverbial pan up the road, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I've been on the council eight years, and I can't remember seeing a budget as uh, positive as this one. So, yeah. so cautiously optimistic, not all the woods yet, but it's, it's well, we've got it was a good feeling. We, have, we also have things in the works. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's, it's, as they say, uh, there's been light at the end of the tunnel. We just hope it's not a freight train. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, great work, uh, Dave, and to all of the department heads that have worked so closely uh, with Dave and the commissioners on going over the budget and talking about enduring uh, and continuing to run first-class operations during the pandemic. This was a tough couple of years, and, and we couldn't have done this if we didn't stick together as a as a unit. So thank everybody for their hard work and their sacrifice and the teamwork and, and being so unselfish as we've tried to balance the budget and keep moving things forward. Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Holmes? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner Grierson? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Mayor McKinney? Aye. Motion carries. Item number nine is departmental commentary. Director Ionson isn't here, so we start off with Director Roberts. Thank you, sir. Um, I was touched a uh, conversation with Lake County DOT. They are closing Russell Road uh, west of Kilbourne Road uh, to repair the railroad tracks there. Uh, that closure will be Monday, October 24th to Thursday, October 27th. The detour route will be south on the Kilbourne 173 to 41. So it's a good size detour. Uh, my second item tonight is the final uh, dates for the LEAP program. Uh, it will start October 31st on Monday and run through November 26th of Saturday. That's the LEAP pickup. And again, we have the vacuum. The vacuum. The bag will continue till November 3rd. And again, we want to remind our citizens that when they're raking their leaves, keep them off the curb. Keep them off of the street, in the curbs, and in the parkways. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, Director Roberts. You gonna make him talk to me? He gets off for the night what? in oh, celebration of his 25 years. Right? Well, he doesn't I, have to have I'm, I'm prepared. Oh, of I'm, course you are. Okay, I'm trying to get you way out of here. What, what's that? That's how you treat Troy. Let's, let's um, thank you, Your Honor. Um, we would like to just uh, acknowledge that we did fire prevention week uh, last week. There was a 9th through 15th this year. Um, it does actually kind of extend a little bit for us. We have lots of different places to visit, kids to see. Um, probably the highlight event was our open house, which was – uh, pretty well attended. We hadn't had one in many years, um, especially we hadn't done any of this stuff since the pandemic started, so it was nice to integrate a lot of our new personnel um, and get them going in the motions of, uh, you know, showing kids uh, what we do at fire safety. This year's um, topic or for the national, for NFPA was fire won't wait, plan your escape. So as we visited some of the schools, we were talking about escape plans, uh, how to get out of the house if there was a fire, and naturally uh, stop, drop, and roll, and Sparky did make an appearance at some of the schools as well. Um, so uh, we'll continue a few more things this week and wrap that up, and it was a great success. And pre-fire uh, prevention week was a stop at my house to keep me from burning bacon. If I recall, you, you, you didn't show up. Uh, that must not have been my shift. No, I didn't hear about that. Had one. a little incident at my house <laughs> one day where I put some bacon in the uh, in the oven, and there was a, a rubber piece that had fallen off, and of course there was all the smoke in the house, and I was running around frantically trying to uh, turn off the fire alarm and unplug the smoke detector so that the fire department would not come out, but in a flash like Santa Claus. 
they were there and everybody in the neighborhood was wondering what was going on. It was a very embarrassing moment. Uh, but they, they cleared the smoke and they've uh, created an ordinance for me not to make any more bacon. No more cooking for me. You've so had a busy thank week you for over the, at that house. Or yeah. Month, I should say. <laughs> yeah, I bet it. Yeah. <laughs> Chief Barb. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, again, thank you. Uh, I just want to touch on a couple things. Um, we've had a lot of roads repaired uh, recently, um, and with that, that's nice to have those nice smooth roads, but I want to remind everybody to remain uh, diligent on their speed and make sure they're within the speed limits. Um, I've noticed that a lot of people are uh, doing well above the speed limit, so uh, we will start working on enforcement on, on those things uh, if it continues, or as it continues. Uh, we had a nice uh, community meeting. I wanted to mention that. That was on Saturday at the high school. Uh, we'll be sending out some more information on that uh, for the next one to come. I think it's January 28th, if I remember right. Correct. Uh, on the date. Yes. Um, so I would invite people to come out uh, for that. And then just lastly, um, uh, Crime Stopper 662-2222. If you have anything that you need to report anonymously, please give them a call. They want your information, not your name. And, no related information over to us. All right. Thank you, Chief Barton. Administrator Nagel. I have one thing um, as it relates to the finance area with water and uh, water and sewer buildings. Uh, during the pandemic, um, we tried to work with residents as much as possible to make sure that uh, utilities stayed on. We waived penalties for late uh, late payment. Uh, we waived doing water shutoff during uh, during the time of that pandemic. Um, as things were kind of starting to recover, uh, we worked with residents on as long as they were seeking, getting assistance from different organizations and they had pledges. Um, we didn't do shutoffs even if they hadn't paid, but they had pledges to try and phase back into normal. Um, during that time, there was like partial payments uh, being made, partial pledges that we, water was keeping on. Um, word, we have since, as of probably three months ago, four months ago stopped doing that. However, there's still a lot of expectation out there and a lot of word around the street that that's still what we're doing. So they, you know, people are paying half their bill saying, and then they're starting to get surprised when they're getting shutoff notices that we're, we've re-implemented shutoff procedures as normal as they were pre-pandemic. So uh, I'm going to put a memo together, put it on Facebook, and I'll probably share it to put on the public works site just to let everyone know that we're back to the code as written pre-pandemic uh, rules as far as making sure your water your bills are current. Um, if you do need assistance, contact Township um, or contact us before the bill is due um, and we can try and work with you for payment arrangements. But we don't want you surprised after the fact uh, when you get the shutoff that was in there and public works is out there doing the shutoffs because by that point it's too late. So. We'll, we'll get information out there, but I wanted to at least uh, share it out there publicly now. All right. Thank you, Administrator Nabel. Any other commissioners have any public comment? Um, I just wanted to, to comment on our roads, like Chief Barton noticed the condition of our roads. Uh, I saw something on the Internet, so it's got to be true, <laughs> um, about conditions of roads in our nation. And um, they, they rated the worst roads in the country, and uh, we didn't make the list. So uh, that's, that's good news. Actually, Wisconsin did make the list, but yeah, believe it. Illinois did not. Um, and I'd have to say, I, I think our roads are in better shape than I've ever seen. And that is uh, a lot to do with um, what Director Roberts has done in the Public Works Department, um, getting bids out early being eligible for grants, and we have received millions of dollars in grant funding, um, and the result is our, our roads, they're not perfect, um, but they're in a lot better shape than they've ever been, so thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Frierson? No. Commissioner Holmes? No. Commissioner Fisher? I would just note that since we're canceling the November 1st meeting, uh, and I won't be able to say it then. Um, uh, just a reminder that November 11th will be Veterans Day. So if you have a veteran in your life or you have a friend or relative, uh, wish them a, a happy Veterans Day. So that is the day that we, we thank our veterans 
Um, and uh, just a little, just a little reminder in advance. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Fisher. Item number ten. Uh, uh, excuse me, uh, Attorney Vasselli. Did you, ha you? You look like you. You looked at me like you had some. Power. No, no, I didn't. No. <laughs> okay. Just happened to be here. You gave me that glance. So, yeah, so. all right. Item number ten is announcements on October twenty fourth through November fifth. There's early voting at Zion City Hall. Monday through Friday, it's 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Some people might wonder why there's two weeks of, of Sundays where there are usually early voting dates here at the City of Zion. Uh, we were informed by the county that they did not have enough staff and uh, people to run the election site to be able to have the City of Zion open on those two Sundays. But again, early voting, an important election, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. at Zion City Hall, and Saturday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. October 28th, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m., Trail of Treats at Shiloh Park put on by the Park District, always a great event. Even during the, the pandemic, we found different ways to get uh, candy for the kids with different devices, uh, dispensing the candy. Uh, a lot of people come out and, of course, are in costumes. Some of our commissioners are out, uh, the Coalition of Com Healthy Communities. So it's another great event at Shiloh Park on October 28th, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. October 30th, 2 p.m. to 5 p.m., Zion Trick-or-Treating. And for all of those that uh, in, are engaged with trick-or-treating or not engaged, you can let uh, people that are coming by, gifting them some kind of signal at your house that you're either interested in trick-or-treaters or not. I think over the last couple of years, it, the traffic has been very light because of the pandemic. But hopefully, the kids will get back out and families will get back out now that the pandemic has quieted down a little bit. Again, uh, on November 1st, uh, Zion City Council meeting will be canceled. Uh, due to early voting, and that is uh, a an order by the county clerk that we, when we have early voting, that we cannot conduct city business in this room. Item number 11, do we need to go into closed close session, or is that no closed session tonight? So item number 12, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion by Friar Second. Second, Second by Hall. <laughs> Uh, clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Holmes? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner Frierson? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Mayor McKinney? Aye. Motion.